Uh, this is Ken Klippenstein with TYT Investigates. I'm going to be talking to you about a new story I have based on a uh, memo leaked to me from someone in ICE showing that they're extremely concerned um, about the you know alleged security situation and they've, they've adopted enhanced security measures. We're going to go into uh, some of the details of you know uh, what the context of that is, what their rationale is. I'll let you guys decide if you think it's reasonable or not. But um, a lot of what I found here was uh, pretty surprising. Um, uh, perhaps most surprising was... Um, I know two um, Department of Homeland Security officials, that's ICE's parent agency, um, told me that um, they actually never got a um, resignation email from the DHS director who resigned about a week and a half ago. And on the same day that he resigned um, was when ICE announced um, this new operation. I'm going to take a look at my notes here. It's called Operation Frozen Shield, if you can believe that. <laughs> Almost sounds like... Uh, cartoon kind of G.I. Joe sort of thing, but um, ICE, ICE um, unveiled Operation Frozen Shield, which um, was a, quote, targeted operation, I'm quoting from the memo that announced it, that would, quote, um, introduce an enhanced set of protection activities, uh, particularly federal protective services um, at various ICE facilities to, um, and this is to combat um, a, quote, trend of violence against our ICE officers and agents. And um, what was interesting about that is the examples that they cite for what constitutes this, you know, um, trend of violence, which they try to describe as unprecedented. Um, their examples uh, were, you know, an armed attack in um, Tacoma, Washington, I believe, and then in Texas as well. What's interesting about those cases is that, um, you know, as horrible as they are, uh, you know, I've my reporting has been very critical of ICE. Um, you know, that said, it's obviously you shouldn't be, you know, causing people harm or, or threats of harm. Neither of those cases, fortunately, um, resulted in any injuries um, of vice officials. So, um, you know, that to me sort of begs the question, um, is this response commensurate with the threat, which it does seem like people are angry at ICE, people are upset at ICE, um, which in itself, y y you would think might... <laughs> um, trigger some soul searching. Uh, why is everyone so mad at ICE? Uh, again, you know, threats of violence are not good. That's counterproductive if y your goal is to, you know, try to hold ICE accountable. But um, it, it seems interesting to me that people's attitudes are changing, uh, as the policies do as well. Of course, um, President Trump has adopted a very hard line uh, position on immigration. Um, and what was interesting about this policy, just to take a look at my notes again here, um, was that they're particularly concerned about a mass shooting. Uh, and what jumped out to me about that was that the mass shooting might not, you know, just be a protester or somebody from outside. That could also be someone from inside. And we have good evidence, and I've reported on this, that morale is extraordinarily low within ICE and then within its parent agency, DHS, as well. Um, I'm not saying that the memo, you know, states that specifically, but I, I think it's something you might want to think about. Um, so they're rehearsing occupant emergency plans, active shooter plans. Again, this is all under um, the auspices of Operation Frozen Shield. Um, when I asked ICE to sort of provide us with some details about what exactly this uh, operation is, again, you know, as a code name, it um, is described as targeted. That sounds significant. They said, quote, ICE will not discuss anything to do with force protection. Uh, and I thought that was unfortunate because they don't have to get into operational details about we're putting this guy here, or we're doing this specifically here. Just give us a general idea. Give the public a sense of what's going on. What are these resources going towards? Because we know that with Scott Pruitt, um, President Trump's former um, EPA director, EPA chief, uh, he had hired 20 personal bodyguards at the expense of millions of the uh, taxpayer. And the EPA uh, watchdog, the uh, inspector general, found that those 20... <laughs> Bodyguards, shocker, were completely unnecessary. So, uh, you know, I'd like to have an answer or at least a rationale for what, what's going on here. Fortunately, we're not given one. Um, but, you know, we got some, we have some hints. Um, the Daily Beast reported a couple of weeks ago that DHS awarded a $2 million contract to um, Customs and Border Protection for access to, quote, world check risk intelligence. Again, not clear if that's directly related to this. I asked ICE, they didn't respond. I asked CBP, they didn't respond. Um, and there was a $3.4 million contract for threat, quote, threat mitigation services. Um, and again, I, you know, asked ICE, they didn't respond. So it's impossible to know if that's directly related. But what it does look like is that they're beefing up security and um, presumably, you know, at a cost of the taxpayers. So I would like to know if uh, is the entire basis for this, these two, you know, incidents that didn't result in any injuries. Um, and in addition to this, there should be a discussion about why, <laughs> you know, why is the public angry at them? 
again, I'm not condoning violence, but um, it, it probably says something if the you know security environment has changed um, entirely from you know as a result of public attitudes towards the agency. Excuse me, just gotta take a swig there. Um, and just looking at it uh, here, this is sort of tangential to the story. I included it because it was interesting. But um, I think that's a major question is why did the director of DHS, the chief of DHS, one of the, you know, a huge agency with massive resources, quietly resign the same day that this uh, policy was introduced? I asked ICE. They uh, didn't comment on it. I'm not saying that they're necessarily related. Um, but what's what's unusual is that he didn't issue a resignation email or a sort of explanation, that, which is very standard, I'm told, by multiple DHS officials to just kind of say, even if it's BS, just kind of say, oh, I'm going to spend time with my family, <laughs> code for, I'm going to go into private contracting. <laughs> um, but no explanation whatsoever, not even an email. Uh, quietly, you know, leaves. Nobody appears to have known that this was going to happen ahead of time. Um, what, you know, what I wonder is this a case like with Kristen Nielsen, where uh, President Trump wants um, the wanted the director to do something that he wasn't willing to do. We don't know. They won't tell us. <laughs> and so I guess that's why I'm here, to try to find out. And um, that's pretty much what I found for you guys. I linked to the article in the um, video description here. But um, that, that pretty much, I think that covers it. Uh, I want to thank you guys very much for joining me. This is Ken Klippenstein with 2IT Investigates.